Blessed be the name of the Lord. You are worthy to be praised, our God. Hallelujah. So we lift up holy hands, we honor God. Singing, blessed. Be the name, blessed be the name, blessed be the name. Oh. Let me hear the sisters sing it loud and clear. Sing it is loud and clear. Blessed be the name of the Lord. You are worthy to be praised. I love Hallelujah. So we lift up holy hands. We honor God. Everybody to cut on our lights again loud and clear. Hallelujah. What it should be praised, our Lord. Hallelujah. So we lift up to the earth with what I call. Singing, blessed be the name. Blessed be the name. Blessed be the name of God. Right there where you are tonight, I want you to prepare your heart. As you raise up your right hand and say this prayer loud and clear, declare this louder than anyone around you. Say, I shall trample upon every serpent and scorpion assigned against my destiny in the name of Jesus open your mouth and declare it I shall trample upon the serpent and scorpions assigned against my life in the name of Jesus thank you Jesus in Jesus name we pray Father we thank you for a time like this I will praise your only name for your people you have specially brought together here. Accept our thanks in Jesus' name. Father, tonight lay your hands upon us. Open our understanding. By the time we leave this gathering, let men and women know that we have encountered the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. A louder amen. Let's have a seat. God bless you. This evening,
We're looking at 30 forces. How much are you? Agbara Ogbo. That limit potential. Tongue and Panekuru. 30 forces. I want Agbara Ogbo. That limit potential. Tongue and Panekuru. And you'll be. It will be very good if you listen carefully. In Second Samuel chapter one, verse nineteen. I read from verse nineteen. Thirty forces. That limit potential. Nobody knew King Saul before. Saul his father's asses got lost. In the process of searching for his father's asses, he Lidu, came across somewhere. Lidu, we and they ordained him the king of Israel. His kingdom was supposed to be forever. But some forces went against him. And they ensure that they terminated that potential. It is a tragedy that Saul just ended up like that. A man who started as a prophet and then ended up as a witch. He went as low as low could get. Oh, really? They le pata pata. In Second Samuel chapter one, we have the Samuel Ori Kini verse nineteen. Ese ko kundini ogu. A lamentation by David. Iko ori re la tenu Davidi concerning Saul. Ne pa Saulu. The beauty of Israel. E ware Israeli is slain upon the high place. Ne pa ne oke giga re. Our the mighty fallen. Tell him nothing, God. Publish it not in the streets of Ashkelon. Let the daughters of the Philistines rejoice. Let the daughters of the uncircumcised triumph. I pray that any power standing to laugh you to scorn shall be disgraced. All the daughters of the uncircumcised. That are waiting to rejoice about your fall. Shall be disappointed and disgraced. In the name of Jesus. Let your name and Lord Alexander. Ye mantis of Gilboa. Let there be no dew. Let there be rain upon you. No prince of offering. But there the shield of the mighty is vilely cast away. The shield of Saul as though he had not been anointed with oil. He was wasted as though nobody anointed him. That is with the anointing upon you there are certain things that it's not supposed to happen to you. So, so the man was just now wasted as if he was never anointed. That is somebody here. Any power drying the anointing of God upon your life shall be buried alive tonight. It shall be buried alive. shall be buried alive. shall be buried alive. He shall be buried alive in the name of Jesus. Die like a fowl. As if he had not been anointed. But the major battle really was battle against his potential. For the blood of the slain from the fat of the mighty, the bow of Jonathan turned not back and the sword of Saul returned not empty. And it was an effective warrior. Saul and Jonathan were lovely and pleasant in their lives. 
In their death, they were not divided. They were swifter than eagles, they were stronger than lions. But they have been wasted now. He said, Father of Israel, weep over Saul. Who clothed in scarlet with other delights. Who put on ornaments of gold upon your apparel. How oh, I the mighty falling in the midst of the battle. O oh, Jonathan, thou was led in thine high places. I'm distressed for thee. My brother Jonathan, very pleasant has thou been unto me. Thy love to me was wonderful. Passing the love of women. How? At the mighty falling. And the weapons of war. Perished. A lamentation about a wasted potential. Thirty forces that limit potential. What does it mean to limit? To limit means to diminish. To shorten. To draw a boundary. To confine. To bottle up. To bound and restrict. To hinder. To reduce. To decree. This is how far you can go. You cannot go further. Thus far can you go and no further. We call them forces of limitation. Something happened in California, in the United States of America. A zookeeper. Who used to take things to a cage of a lion? Forgot to close the cage. And the lion came out. The whole of the zoo was in pandemonium. Everybody was running about. They carried their guns. They were ready to shoot. Quickly, they make announcements. Everybody in this zoo, get out now. Out, out. Because there are a lot of people around, going around the zoo. Bless up. Bless up. The lion come out. 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 Looked around to so all the people running that task at that. And with a, a disinterested look, just went back to his cage and sat down there. And they just quietly closed him inside. The forces of limitation have gotten the lion so used to that limitation that to him it has become his normal life. I decree that any power that wants you to get used to a cage shall be buried alive tonight. <laughs> Let your emo roll like fire. Let your emo roll like thunder. Let your emo roll like fire. In the name of Jesus. Forces of limitation. I want Bara Akeni Kuru. Forces of limitation. I want Bara Akeni Kuru. They did an experiment in a laboratory. Once you are here, they put a rat. Inside the container. And the container was covered on top. And they put a fire under that container. So the raft kept jumping up to jump out. But each time it made effort to jump out, the head will hit the cover. 
Another head has eaten the cover several times. The rat became wise and was not jumping that high again for his head to eat the. After a few minutes, they now removed the cover so that he could jump out. But because of the bashing his head had received, he kept jumping low, low, low until he was tired instead of just jumping out. Every power pressing down your head and trying to suppress you, they shall be buried alive today. They shall be buried alive. 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 In the name of Jesus. It is a tragedy when a forest dies in a tree. It is a tragedy when a tree dies in the seed. It's a tragedy. When a big woman dies in a small girl. It's a tragedy. When a high flying man dies in a little boy. It's a tragedy. When a minister of God dies as a parrot. It's a tragedy when an eagle dies as a chicken. It's a tragedy when a master dies as a slave. It's a tragedy when an employer dies as an employee. It's a tragedy when a teacher dies as a student. It's a tragedy when a ruler dies as a servant. It's a tragedy when a multi-millionaire dies as a pauper. There are destiny thieves. There are destiny vandals. There are destiny vultures. There are destiny criminals. There are potential blockers. There are powers that limit potentials. To be quite honest with you, beloved, there is actually a department in the dark world targeted at limiting human potentials and derailing their destinies. But John had a dream one night. He saw himself in a witchcraft coven. All of them were dressed in black. And they surrounded him. He said to them, Oh, we won't. Leave me alone. Every minute there. Leave me alone. Every minute there. Leave me alone. Every minute there. They did not answer. Oh, sit down alone. Very soon, all of a sudden, like where no Gigi, but I just noticed that there was a tailor. A tailor was there with a sewing machine. I have to need to have a work case. If we have to go and get to the general general shop, a lawyer, a lot of people are shop. And the the witches commanded the tailor to sew. I want to get to the general general shop, a general shop. And they sewed a small size shirt. And a tiny trouser. And they handed it to Brother John. These are your clothes. Wear them. Brother John began to struggle to put them on. The thing was difficult for him to wear, but he was squeezing himself into it. He was in this process, he woke up. Woke up sweating. Nobody needed to tell him that something had gone wrong. Since that day, John 
never passed any examination again. He had been given a limiting uniform. The enemy had given him a uniform of stagnancy and a uniform of limitation. Those are limiting powers. Limiting powers. What is potential? Potential is a dimension of the ability of God. That has been given to man. A dimension of the ability of God. That has been given to man. A dimension of the efficiency and creativity of God. If you want, that has been given unto man. As a child of God, beloved, you possess awesome potentials. Whether you put it to use or not is another story. Your potential is what you are destined to become, but you have not become it yet. Your potential is that which you can do, but you have not yet done it. Your potential is where you can go, but you have not yet gone there. Your potential is your unused strength. Your untapped power. Your unrealized ability. Your unrecognized gifts. Your obscure opportunities. The sleeping giant that is within you. Your unmanifested gifts. That's what we call potentials. Your unwritten books. Your unexplored possibilities. Your undeclared manifesto. Those are the potentials. And as a child of God, you have unlimited potential. Because the measure of your ability is also the measure of God's ability. The Bible says, I will praise thee. For I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Fearfully and wonderfully made. God told Moses, Lord, Moses pay? Now look, Whoa. I'm taking you to the promised land. And you leave the people there. So God's potential for them was to reach there. Whether they got there or not, another story. God told Joshua, every place the soul of your foot shall tread upon, I'll give them unto you. That is, a, that is very high potential. So each child of God is a loaded gold man. Now comes the key question. Can potentials be limited? The answer is a resounding yes. The children of Israel failed to maximize their potential. They eventually did not drive out all the enemies from the promised land and process the land fully and today, to the, up to today, they are suffering now. The warfare that Israel is fighting today is because 
that right there in scripture, they refuse to drive out all these enemies. Joash in the Bible. Joash in the came crying to Elisha. Elisha was not interested in the cry the king was crying. Because the reason Joash was crying was because now Elisha was dying. And Elisha has made the man helping him. So he got there crying, my father, my father, the chariot of Israel. And the horsemen there Elisha was not impressed. <laughs> Take bow and arrow. Shoot. Shot one. 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 Very soon the man that he said was dying now began to prophesy. Like when I know any tongue was upon Kula in a very since I don't tell it. So oh no. Oh my so when I say shoot, if I see money for that shot three times and over. Oh, but that you met a bit of a law. So now that you shot only two. You want that oh I just make you pay a lot of time. Only defeat them twice. And then you know Shagu. Mean that after the second one you're on your own. Oh too much you can lay Shagu Kaji. Oku Oku are Joash limited his potential. Joash, you are okay. So limited his potential, his kingdom did not continue. The disciples stood before a demon possessed and they were helpless. They limited their potential. Until Jesus came back to the scene and called them faithless generation. Samson limited his potential. He died with his enemies. He died with the Philistines. Abraham limited his potential. Abraham He did not drop everything God asked him to drop. Carry Lot along. Carry his father along. And they hindered the journey of Abraham. The blind Bartimaeus. Jesus said, What do you want me to do for you? The man only gave one prayer point. If he had said more things to Jesus, he would have added that day. So it is possible for potentials to be limited. It is possible for somebody to mean to rise to a high height for the enemy oppressing at low level. What are these 30 forces that limit potential? Number one, the power of sin. Sin is a destroyer. And any sin in your life will strengthen the enemy against you. Any sin in your life must go. Because all sinners are grouping together with the devil to fight the Almighty. Any sin at all will limit your potential. And no matter how clever you are, your sin will find you out. No matter how intelligent you are, no matter how sophisticated you are, your sin will find you out. And though hand be joined in hand, the Bible says, no sinner will go unpunished. You may go undetected. You may go unnoticed. You may do it carefully without anybody seeing you. But you say, go and be joined in hand. No sinner will go unpunished. That's what the Bible says. So, any sin in your life will limit your potential. There is no small sin. Sin is sin. 
There is no well. Uh, yeah. uh, I am not. I am not like that person over there. No, sin is sin. Eshe, eshe, eshe. Two. Ikeji. Ah, I'm believe. I believe. I believe. I believe. I believe. I believe. I believe. Jesus could not do too much work in his place of birth. Because the people did not believe. Unbelief will limit your potential. Three. Negative environment. God asked Abraham in Genesis 12 and get out. Once your environment begins to influence your life for evil, get out. Out of the environment. Four. Wrong association. Wrong relationship. The Bible says if you move with the wise, you'll be wise. If you move with the foolish, you'll be foolish. That man, that white man wrote. Uh, a proverb says, show me your friends, I will know the kind of person you are. Allow you cannot be so close to God's enemies and you expect God to bless you. If your best friend is an enemy of God, you don't expect God to bless you. In fact, when the judgment of God will fall, it may fall on you because you are close to the person. You don't join your business together with those who are children of the devil. You cannot bless whom God has cursed. Five. Negative self-image. You are talking yourself down. You are going through inferiority complex. The image of yourself you present is negative. It will limit your potential. Six. Mental limitation. Mental limitation. You have accepted that certain things cannot be done by you, you cannot be done, so you just give up. You just give up. This mentality of limitation is, is a force. Seven. Your family background. Your family background. Some have come from a family where people do not prosper. Some come from a family where people don't marry. Some come from a family where there will always be one small girl in the secondary school or primary school will get pregnant. Some come from a family where he and his wife are the first generation of Christians. Anybody before them, they are all abalists and native doctors and they serve the devil. God told Gideon, if you want to succeed, go back and destroy the altar of your father's house. And the man did. But he didn't completely wipe out everything. And it came back to fight Gideon later. And Gideon eventually was relocated back to the poverty from which God found him. Forces number eight. Wrong models. We Wrong models. We The people you want to model your life after are the thieves, the rogues. I want to offer. I want to I want to 
Orkantic men. I want to let go of Orkantic women. I will be let go of Kuku. Those are your models. I want to do one more. That's what you're looking at. I will push you. You look at them in television and say, Oh, I wish I could become like this one. Not knowing that the person you say you want to become like is a wife of Lucifer. Wrong model. I want. I will push you, Kuku. Nah. You can so. Negative information. Iroi, tio to. Negative information. Iroi, tio to. Abi iroi, to no di. You are always getting negative, negative information. But go iroi, tio to, tio tio ti to lo riga. Information that would derail, that would demote is what is inside your brain. Iroi, tio shinilo no, tio pani lule. Olo wa no kolo. Anytime you open your mouth, it's bad news. You are telling others. Go go ba to ba ya no re ba gaba iroi bupuru lo mfi lo shopa weni. It will limit your potential. Yo ke ampani re kuru. Number ten is when you lack a mentor. <laughs> you have a good mentor, somebody that will mentor you. And that severely limits you. Number twelve. Uh-huh, that's right. So you should follow me very well. Number 11 is failure to obtain divine guidance. You do things without prayer. You marry, no prayer. You go to your husband, no prayer. You build a house, no prayer. You start a business, no prayer. You put God last. Put yourself first. And you want things to work out. It doesn't work out that way. Twelve. Disobedience. I Disobedience. I As far as God is concerned, ninety-nine percent obedience is disobedience. Ninety-nine percent. That one percent that you used to be disobedient, it, it therefore cancels everything that it is disobedient. How you say, I don't steal, I don't commit fornication, I don't backbite, but if you are telling lies, you say you are guilty of everything. Out of the Ten Commandments, if you are guilty of one, you are guilty of all the other because it's the same punishment. Thirteen is lack of wisdom. Lack of wisdom. When you lack wisdom, the enemy will waste you. There are two keys that can get you anything you want in life. The first one is wisdom. The second one is power. You need that wisdom. Fourteen. Immaturity. I told you about Lack of maturity. I told you about. Do you know there are plenty of Christians who come to church and they are completely babies in Christ? They are babies in Christ. And as far as heaven is concerned, they are still on feeding bottles. They are still using their nappies. As far as heaven is concerned. And what a strange thing. When everyone sees a 60 year old man, a 50 year old woman still in nappies. Fifteen. Absence of quality. I don't you don't you don't do anything well. You don't do it with all the, your strength and all your knowledge. Oh, It is a limiting force. Oh, Sixteen. is lack of prophetic oversight. I need you lack prophetic oversight. I need a real holy. You just do things without inquiry prayer, without the eye of the prophet. Oh, can you say, like Badura Iwadi, like a real holy? Seventeen. 
being unfriendly with the Holy Spirit. You're not close to the Holy Spirit. You don't commune with the Holy Spirit. It is a limiting force. 18. Laziness. Laziness. A lazy man will not make any progress. 19. Ignorance of spiritual warfare. You are a child of God, but you lack knowledge on how to fight. Ignorance of spiritual warfare. I need twenty. Lack of integrity. I need Nobody can trust you. Nobody believes you anymore. You say I'm a Christian, they say, Go on, come on down to don't talk rubbish. Listen, if you are a sister, you are working in an office, you are carrying the Bible. And the boss there is sleeping with you. Somebody is sleeping with you in that office. You have technically closed your mouth to witness Jesus in that place. And if God brought you there to save their soul, their blood will be on your head. Those men that are so attracted to you and they are coming to you, they are coming to you, they are coming to you, instead of you to lead them to Christ, they are leading you to sin, their blood will be required from your head because you know the truth. And that may be the reason why God is allowing them to come to you. It is not everybody who comes to Mountain of Fire and Miracles Ministry who are serious. There are plenty of people who come here who are not born again. Don't let me, let's, let's, let's not deceive anybody about that one. If you look around now, Suppose you find somebody here who has just finished his fornication and is here. So there are plenty who come who really are not serious with God. There was a man like that that was coming here. He wasn't serious with Jesus. He stopped his car. Somewhere close to the campus to pick up a girl. And very soon he began to talk rubbish and nonsense to that girl. He was talking immorality to that girl. And that girl said, Which church do you attend? It's a mountain of fire. He said, Very well. Let me give you this uh, cassette to go and listen to. The girl gave the man one cassette of a message to listen to. But the man's hand was shaking. He couldn't take it from her. Because these are things that he's been told. Another person is not telling him. Those are people who come. They just come. Members of Mountain of Fire American Street, they don't start fighting on the streets. They are not the kind of men and women who pull down their trousers and put down their skirt anyhow, anytime, anywhere. But they will be coming here and joining us. So when we shout hallelujah, our hallelujah will be very loud. But they, be, they come here, but they are not part of us. I want you to understand this very well. And those are the people polluting the powers of God and polluting the temple. We have to be very, very careful. 21. Lack of right education. I need a 
lack of right education. The Bible does not oppose people going to school. The Bible does not oppose people improving their knowledge. 22. Pride. Pride goes before fall. 23. Failure to learn. If you refuse to learn, your potentials will be limited. Twenty-four. Unwillingness to change. Don't want to change at all. Twenty-five. Is lack of adaptation. Don't want to adapt yourself to a situation. Twenty-six. It's lack of positive exposure. I need Where you are going, you are not positively exposed to things. Twenty-seven. Generational curses. Curses limit people severely. And a lot of people are laboring under such curses. Twenty-eight is prayerlessness. A prayerless person is worse than somebody who had a terrible vehicle accident. And twenty-nine. Scriptural ignorance. You don't know your Bible. You are ignorant about what the Bible is saying. And number 30 is sexual immorality. Forces that limit potential. Number 30 is sexual immorality. The Bible, the Bible tells us in Proverbs chapter 22. Proverbs 22. You will do well to look at this scripture I'm opening now. <laughs> Proverbs 22. Verse 14. All the men that are here, open their hands. All the young men that are here, open there and see for yourself now. Read this very strange scripture. Very strange scripture. Proverbs 22, 14. The mouth of a strange woman. Or a strange man. Is a deep pit. He that is aboard of the Lord shall fall therein. That is, once fornication is taken over your heart, and immorality is taken over your spirit, it means that perhaps you have offended God and He want to deal with you. Say, he that is aboard of the Lord is the one who will fall there. So if you are falling to fornication, say so perversion. <laughs> It means you have been aboard of the Lord. Perhaps your life is not straight. The Bible says free sexual immorality. So every sin that a man does is outside the body. But he who commits sexual immorality sins against his own body. The Bible says, I've written to you to keep, not to keep company with anybody who is a fornicator. So don't even eat with such a person. This Acidic warning from scriptures. God puts them there because God knows that sexual immorality brings volumes of trouble. Which can affect the present and 
born generation. So let God says, resist the devil and he will flee from you. But when it came to sexual immorality, God did not say resist. He said, flee. Flee. Showing you the danger and the problem it could cause. They did some research in some university some, some, some time ago among male volunteers. They wanted to measure the kind of energy a man loses during ejaculation in sex. By the time they attach electrodes and did some samples, their, their calculation shows that the man loses the energy that he gains from two meals, two food, two meals. So you can see how some people filter away their useful energy. Any conduct with the opposite sex that is contrary to Bible standard is immorality. All the Bible calls fornication. Adultery, homosexuality, sexual practices between two men, lesbianism, two females, exerting themselves with their fingers, with vibrators, with objects. The Bible classifies them under sexual immorality. It will limit your potential, if not destroy it completely. Just like it did to Reuben in the Bible. Jacob told Reuben, you are the excellency of my strength and the dignity of my power so, but thou shalt not excel because of immorality all the petting and the necking the kissing and the caressing which arouses sexual excitement they are all sexual immorality prostitution whether, acad- whether academic or crude. Are they sleeping for benefit? Any benefit at all? It doesn't, to, it doesn't have to be money. It could be any other thing. It's prostitution. All forms of oral sex and masturbation, they are sexual immorality. And I say, ah, but she's my wife, so I have the right to be putting my organ into her mouth. No, if God wanted you to put your organ into her mouth, you will put a vagina in her forehead. All the pornography. All those things that people have said, they carry people away now. It's an, it's an agenda by the enemy to limit potential. And more than any other thing that men commit now, the spiritual effect of sexual immorality is terrible. You lose fellowship with God. It will affect, it will affect your health. It will affect your life. It will cut you off. It will bring you down. That's why the Bible says, flee. What do we do now? The force is to repent from every known sin. If you want to get married, get married. If you are of age, instead of living in sexual immorality. Launch yourself into warfare against limiting forces. 
And that's why we are here this evening. We have prayers to pray. And plenty of people need to repent. But it's easy to masquerade in a place like this. To masquerade in a place like this. It's like the other time. There was a word of knowledge. There is a man here. I have been committing immorality. Come out now. Before it's too late. He thought it was a joke. So the wife, because the wife was by his side. And so he didn't want the wife to know what he was doing. In one week, the man had been buried. So it's easy to start masquerading. If you masquerade in a holy place like this, then the ball is in your court. It means you are really not interested in your destiny. Rise up on your feet now. All eyes closed. Rise up on your feet. All eyes closed. You see, if you are here this evening, I am not born again. You need to surrender your life to Jesus. Just raise up your right hand. Now see what I'm going to say after Say, so, Father, in the name of Jesus, I come before you now. Lord Jesus, come into my life. Take control of my life. In Jesus' name. Amen. To so, set a shop there with me, immediately the we close, just find a way to the altar here. Immediately we close. All eyes closed. This is a serious matter. The enemy has escorted so many people to a valley of failure. And it's a tragedy if I allow him to destroy you there. The prayer we're going to pray tonight. We may not be able to finish it tonight. We will continue at Palm of St. that is coming on Saturday. That's why you must make sure you don't miss that Palm of St. for any reason. Amen. Amen. As many people as are here tonight, you know that you have things to sort out with God. I will not mention what it is. But you, can see. you have issues to resolve. Just right there where you are. Get on your knees and resolve it with the Lord. The rest of us, let us begin to address anything in our lives that will empower the enemy against us. Let's begin to address them that they should let us go. So that tonight you will arrive at a location that will move your destiny forward. We are here for serious business. It's a bit tragedy if you allow the enemy to cage you. It will be a tragedy if you allow the enemy to put you into the deep pit. Sort yourself out with the Lord now. Talk to the Lord now. Talk to the Lord now. You that lady over there, since you slept with what man in fornication? A serpent has moving all around your body. The thing has moving all over you. Find a way to this altar and be on your knees so that one day this serpent will not get to your heart. And that will be the end. You are here, you are a lady. Since you slept with that man in fornication, there has been a serpent moving about your body. Find a way to this altar and be on your knees. Don't allow this serpent to get to your heart to cut your heart off. 
Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. We are here for a serious matter. And we are here to fulfill an agenda. Thank you, Jesus. Father, Baba, we are gathered before you here tonight. You do not want the enemy to limit our potential. That's why you have brought us to this meeting. Father, I pray. And all these limiting powers that have been pursuing your children that they will be cut off tonight in the name of Jesus. Let the agenda of darkness for your children here dismantle completely in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Everybody rise up now. Apart from, apart from those on the altar here. Everybody rise up. If you pray this prayers, I ask you to pray now. And you lose your voice. But the powers limiting your potentials are destroyed. The forces that have been pushing you are pushed back. Then you have made the progress. But if you keep quiet, the enemy will waste you. This is why you must shout this louder than anyone around you. Pray this prayer hard. Pray it violently. Those of you at the altar here, pray with all your heart. The serpent in you is to limit your potential. Everybody will shout this loud and clear. Where is the Lord God of Elijah? Let my limitation die. In the name of Jesus, the Oruka Deku, Possenta Kayabo Sentelaba, Pali Bosa, Rivers upon the Kayabo Sentelaba, Pali Bosa, the power of God, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in Jesus, name we pray, the Oruka Deku, Nadadura. Father, I pray for your children here at the altar. Every serpent and scorpion that has entered into anybody's body, let the power of God cut them off now. In the name of Jesus, receive your deliverance. Receive it. 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 In the name of Jesus. Ah, then beginning from today, every limiting power that has been oppressing you, I shake them off in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' name we pray. You may go back to your seat now. The hand of God has touched you here tonight. Everybody will roar like thunder and shout this loud and clear. Goliath of limitation! Goliath of against my Lord! The one of In the name of Jesus! Go out of limitation! I'm not against my life! In the name of Jesus! In Jesus' name we pray! Say witchcraft powers after a day in my dream. Lord, you allow me. Can I hear you shouting this loud and clear? Aside against my potential, 
Thanks for watching. Remember to click the subscribe button and the notification bell beside it to be updated with Ebenezer and Make Channel's video whenever available. Don't forget to comment, like, and share the video with your friends and family. Bye.